Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about another advanced ACT only math topic. The topic today is ellipses, so let's take a look. All right, let's talk about ellipses. So in order to get into this lesson, we first need to review some topics from a video from a while back, which in this case is circles in coordinate planes. So we have a circle in a coordinate plane is just whenever we have, as you can see below, a circle in a coordinate plane. And the equation for that to review is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And so the h minus k is going to tell us where the x coordinate of the center is, the y minus k is going to tell us where the y coordinate of the center is, and then the r is going to tell us the size of the circle, and that the r is the radius squared. And what I said in this lesson is very rarely on the test, they're going to actually divide both sides by r squared, and you're going to get x minus h squared over r squared plus y minus k over r squared equals 1, which is exactly the same thing. We've just divided both sides by r squared because here we get r squared over r squared being 1. And we can see that just a little visual reference for how this is going to look here. We have the r right there as our radius, and whatever that is squared is going to be the denominator for both our x coordinate and our y coordinate. And then we have our h and k, our coordinates for our center, just still preserved in the numerator of this fraction. And so then let's talk about what an ellipse even is. So, you know, a circle is perfectly round. Let's see if I can do a good circle there. And then an ellipse is anything that is squished. So in this case, we have the an ellipse here that has the major axis, which is the longer element along the x. The minor axis is along the y. This is an ellipse, and something like this would also be an ellipse. Just in the second one here, the y axis is the major axis because it's longer along the y than it is along the x. So when I say ellipse, I'm just talking about a squished circle. And so because that's the case, the equation that we have for an ellipse is actually going to be pretty similar to what we have for a circle. So with an ellipse, we have a, like I said, the major axis, and b, the minor axis. And these have to be at right angles to each other, and we still have hk as our center. And conveniently enough, the equation for our ellipse is going to be exactly the same thing as it was for our circle with our denominator with the radius in it, except for now the dimensions of the x and the y can actually be different. So in this ellipse here, I've said that a is the major axis, and you can see that it is because the x uh, dimension is longer than the y dimension. And then b, the minor axis, is the denominator for the y axis. And if we were to take a rough estimate of what this looks like here, I would say you know, probably let's say this is like three for the major axis, the three units long. Let's say then that the, the B is like two units long, and then that would mean that this right here, H and K, would be something like negative five and negative four. Yeah, it looks about right. Just eyeballing something specific here. And so if we wanted to put, input this to our ellipse equation, that would be X plus five squared because it's the inverse sign of the whatever constant we have in here uh, for our center. And then we have over whatever 3 squared, which would be 9, and then plus y minus, or rather plus 4 squared, and that is going to be our numerator there, all over 2 squared, which is 4, and that's going to equal 1. And so this is most of what we have to do for ellipse questions on the ACT. They never get that complicated. I think one of the interesting things that I'll occasionally see them do is um, transfer the constant over to the, the right side. And in order to do that, you just basically need to multiply both sides by uh, a squared times b squared. So in this case, that would be uh, 9 times 4, so 36. So what that's going to do is we're going to have 36 times x plus 5 squared over 9 plus 36 times y plus 4 squared over 4, and that's going to equal 36. And since we have 36 over 9 here, we can actually cancel that out and say this is 4, and we can cancel that 36 out here and say that this is 9. So that's going to leave us with, uh, what, 4x plus 5 squared plus 9xy plus Four squared equals 36. You don't see that too often, but that's effectively, it is the same thing. It's equivalent. It's just reading it in a sort of slightly different way. So the next and final thing we have to talk about here is 
the are the foci of the ellipse. I never quite sure how to pronounce this. Is that their foci or foci? I'm going to say foci. So the foci of the ellipse is mathematically going to be, that's going to be C is the foci. That's going to just be A squared minus B squared. So that's, you know, whatever the square root of the square of the major axis and the difference of that between square of the minor axis is going to be what our foci are. And the foci lie along the major axis. And that's like adjacent to Pythagoras and seems kind of complicated. And so what I like to do is provide a much simpler and more intuitive understanding of the foci because on the ACT, at least, it's never going to be very complicated. So what I'll say is we'll draw out an ellipse and I'll ask you, what sports ball does this look like? And it's definitely not a basketball, definitely not a baseball. What you might be saying at home is this looks a lot like a football. And one thing that would really make this look like a football is if I put in some stitching. And the stitching on a football looks like this. And the fun thing is that the stitching on the football, where that stitching ends, is more or less where the foci will be. So when they ask you about foci on the ACT, Effectively, all you'll need to know is that the foci are going to end someplace around about where the stitching on a football would end. And so along the major axis toward the edges of the you know, stitching on a football. So keep that in mind in case you see a foci question on the ACT. OK, and speaking of questions, we've got some example problems here. We have two as usual, so we're going to go through those one at a time. Take a look at this first one and see what you can do. All right, let's go through it. So in the standard xy coordinate plane, one of the following is an equation of the circle that can be inscribed in the ellipse of 9x squared plus 16y squared plus equals 144. Which equation is that? This is a really interesting problem. You know, as usual, one of the best ways to solve this is going to be to make a drawing. And we have this 9x squared plus 16y squared equals 144 which is in sort of an unfamiliar format for an ellipse. So what we're going to do is go ahead and divide that by 144 to get our equals 1 on the right side. And so 9x squared over 144, that 9 is going to cancel out. And that's going to leave us with x squared over 16. And then if we have 16y over 144, y squared, that's going to leave us with 9 in the denominator because, you know, 16 times 9 is equal to 144, and that's how we get this number over there. And then 144 over 144 is 1, which leaves us back in a state of understandable ellipse where we have the major axis being four, like four, with the major axis being 4 because that's what 16 squared is because a squared is equal to 16. And then we have b squared equal to 9, which means that the minor axis is going to be 3. So what that's pretty much going to look like is something like, oh, that's pretty bad. How about this? And remember, the drawing is only as good as it needs to be. If you're going to inscribe a circle in here, it needs to look like a little bit of an eye. And so this shows us from this little terrible drawing here that it has to conform to the minor axis more than it does the major axis, because if it was as big as the major axis, then it would be outside of the circle, which this says inscribed in the ellipse, as opposed to an ellipse inscribed within that circle, which means that this radius right here must be equal to the minor axis. Uh, the minor axis uh, is 3, and that's going to leave us with b as our answer, which is where we have our radius squared equal to 9. All right, moving on to our next practice problem, see what you can do with this one. All right, let's take a look. In the diagram above, which the following points could lie on the foci of the ellipse? So I'm not giving you a whole lot of data here. I'm just saying which is the, could potentially be on the foci, so or could be the foci, I suppose, or one of them. So what I'm doing here is just making sure that you're really underthinking the math associated with the foci. You know, as I defined in the lesson, it must be along the major axis and be toward the end of the stitching on the football. And there's only one point here that could even potentially be along the minor axis and is within the ellipse, which would be C right here. Because A, D, and E are all along the ellipse, and the foci must be inside of the ellipse. And then B is along the minor axis, or looks to be, which is to say the only one that could even potentially be correct is C. OK, that's it for this video. 
Remember, ellipses are basically just squished circles, and all the rules that apply to circles in coordinate planes also apply to ellipses. Remember also that the foci of an ellipse must lie along the major axis, and would basically be where the stitching would stop if the ellipse were a football. If you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video, and subscribe to Quiet Education. If you require any tutoring, please reach out to us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.